Your eyes take the pictures first and it is stored as a memory in your head forever. That is what photography does to one's life. Hi, my name is Manjinde. I'm a fashion and glamour portrait photographer. So I was about 11 years old and I used to sit with my grandfather and he was a camera technician. And he used to repair these beautiful cameras. In those times, the camera bodies used to be made of aluminium. And uh, I used to get a chance to pick up a part of the camera, which were the film days. And I used to ask my grandfather, you know, like, what is this prism? What is this shutter? And uh, how does a mirror look like in it? And all these parts used to be my toys in my childhood. And I think, I believe I was around 10 years old. That's where the journey actually started when he taught me how to put a camera together instead of teaching me how a camera works. And he showed me how to build a camera. Then I realized and learned in a very beautiful way that it is a box of product that creates magic. And that's how the photographs were developed. My first camera was a uh, Canon AE-1, which I had in my hand, which I was learning to put together. And I believe it was one of the most expensive cameras in those days. And I had it in me with different, you know, lying down in various parts, which I was learning to put it together. And I started shooting first pictures, couple of them initially on that camera. The interest of photography lived within me from that moment. I realized that this is something that I love to do and usually my pastime used to be something that you know I used to play around taking pictures. It used to be expensive in those days but my grandfather used to give me one roll in a month and he used to tell me take the pictures and let's see what you create and I used to then take and learn how to develop them and when I used to see it and I used to ask myself oh this is amazing this is what I like to do it used to be a maybe it used to be stupid pictures like a picture of a mango or a bird something like that but then my grandfather used to explain me you know what was composition in those days without actually knowing what you're shooting because today digital journey has evolved so much in those days you know you have taken a picture and you have to wait for 15 days for it to get developed so photography has taught me many things first thing is uh, what I always tell in all uh, my students also that photography has taught me to observe things. I started paying attention to tiny details that are so beautiful in our surroundings, which we generally, you know, uh, overlook it. We don't really look at it in a different way. We just observe things as they're part of our normal life. But if you just give a minute more to it and you observe it, you try to find beauty in it. Photography has always taught me to see positivity in one person, recognize the talent of that person, how that person is. and. As the days have passed, it has brought me uh, to a point where I really look forward to picturing many things in a very different way and a different perspective. What do you see generally around you? Clothes, trends, it can be regarding clothing, it regarding brands. So fashion is something that is going to be part of your life, my life and everyone's life. And that is what you're going to see generally maybe every two hours in your cell phone, maybe every day when you're traveling or something that you're going to read about. It's going to be a part of your life and that is why I selected fashion. In fashion or generally in any kind of photography, I believe that lighting sells everything. Lighting is the main part because if you don't have good lighting, you can't have a good picture. You can take a picture with any camera, but without great lighting, you won't be able to tell any kind of story. And when you talk about fashion specifically, it is about trend that's, you know, going to be adapted with every human being. And it's going to be a part of everyone's life. It has to be interesting. It has to have those crisp details. At the same time, it has to have the interest that the product or the brand is trying to sell and through your pictures. So you have to really have good lighting in your pictures.
So I believe Godox has a variety of flash powers available. So if you're somebody who needs about 100 or you need something for a big fashion shoot like 1200, everything is available and all can be controlled with one trigger. The consistency in their product quality is amazing. The consistency in their flash output is amazing. So you know what you're using. I generally use the battery operated Godox lights because it gives me the flexibility to change location instantly and as a you know fashion photographer you have to enter some busy locations and you can't plug in all the time those power circuits you know when you're using that 100 at a 50th of a power or you're using 300 at the 50th power and you have shot 50 to 100 images and the last image that you're going to shoot it's equally going to be lit as your first shot. The points which are there in this flash is so neatly and technologically advanced that the consistency of the output is really nice. Perfect lighting, crisp lighting. We've got a lovely light over here, which is the main light of ours. This is kind of a beauty light that's adding a lot of glam to the lower body. We've got uh, 180, 100 over here, which is giving us a nice soft punch coming from one side. And we have got a nice video like this here, which is for you all to see what I am doing. So, hope you all are enjoying it. Softbox or a modifier does one work of blending light. So Godox has variety of softboxes, so every need of yours, they have, they've got it actually. And I think one of my favorite is the Parabolic QRP120. Second one is the Reflective Umbrella, which I believe is always stuck in my camera bag and I can take it anywhere. It's easy to put and has a good quality of light output. The lighting is fantastic right now, but I want the 800 to go a little less power. So let's reduce that about half a power. So my process of lighting generally for my photography, I try to keep it very relatable to reality because as an everyday goer, when you see a normal image on your cell phone, you want it to relate it to your life or maybe something that will bring back a quick memory for you. So keeping it very realistic, I try to mix a lot of natural light with our you know, continuous, our flashlights and I have been trying to do that since many years and what it really does is it clicks onto people's eyes very quickly and you don't feel that the images are fake. So when you try to pay attention to my images, you might feel that, you know, it is naturally beautiful. It's not created like digital me how we try to put in too many things. It's not generally like that. So it's simple, but it's still creative. I would say this for every photographer, Godox has opened doors of opportunity and letting him create his work on a different level each time because when you look at their product range they have, they have introduced so many wide amount of products that the power that you need for your shoot maybe like 100 or if you want 300 or you want 600 a photographer can choose what he needs perfect amount of light consistency and the quality of light they have delivered in their every product so for a photographer like me i prefer something that I can take every day with me. So in my bag, you'll always find the 300. And the 300 has allowed me to make my work so beautiful and create another dynamic range in my you know, photographs. I can take it anywhere. It's battery powered. It allows me to have the punch of light that I need and it can easily be balanced within natural light. And you know, putting up the smallest softbox on it, you can create great pictures. So when I was going through that phase, I met a lot of photographers. I had conversations with them. I sat with creative directors, some brand people. I wanted to understand what they are wanting because somewhere where you reach a point that you're not able to deliver, or maybe you're not able to perform, something is going wrong over there. For every photographer, this is a point. 
you need to understand how you're going to overcome it. So for me, it was an easier way of understanding what the world needs and how you can deliver to it. So for an every artist, this would be an advice. They would uh, and they should probably take a look at the new magazines that are coming up. Someone's writing about something. Technology is evolving. You have to, you know, walk hands in hands with each part of it. So take a break. So make a nice coffee for yourself. Go on a small vacation. Take a look back at your work and correct yourself. As a photographer, you feel that, you know, I'm going to go take a picture. All my teams are set. They know their work. Honestly, nothing works like that. Sometimes you might not get along well with your makeup artist. Sometimes you might not get along well with your creative director. You have to be on point at the same time. You have to take all of them together and pass through this journey and make sure that it delivers what's needed. So first thing is people management skills is something that you really need to be good at. You have to have patience. You have to have a quality of understanding because everyone on the day of shoot will have a different perspective, a point of their opinion. You cannot neglect it. You can't overpower it, but you have to take it, blend it and then deliver it. So photography has taught me many things. First thing is uh, what I always tell in all uh, my students also that photography has taught me to observe things. I started paying attention to tiny details that are so beautiful in our surroundings, which we generally, you know, uh, overlook it. We don't really look at it in a different way. We just observe things as they're part of our normal life. But if you just give a minute more to it and you observe it, you try to find beauty in it. 